Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. So, we will continue our discussion with exact solutions of the Navier-Stokes equations. As you said that for some simple cases and the simplest possible cases that we consider is unidirectional flow. The flow is everywhere in only one direction and not only that, in that direction the flow is independent of distance along that direction. That is, if the flow is taken to be in the x direction or whatever direction it is, that is the x, then the flow quantities are independent of x. <coughs> the flow is only in the x direction, but the derivative in the x direction are 0. That is the simplest possible case and for which the Navier Stokes solution can be solved exactly in some cases. One such example we have considered in the last class which is the classical hagen poiseuille flow <coughs> and we will consider a similar example, again a very classical problem known as covet flow problem. The classical coit flow problem is like this that imagine you have two infinite flat plate and the fluid is flowing between those two plates. You have two infinite flat plate and the fluid is moving between those two plates. How the fluid is moving? The fluid is made to move by moving one of the plate in one particular direction. This, this is the classical cut flow that is you have say two flat plates <coughs> infinitely wide so that there is no variation in that direction. We consider this this is the flow direction or at time t equal to 0 this is given a motion say u 0. The upper plate, the upper plate is made to move with a uniform velocity of u 0. Okay. No pressure gradient is imposed in the general case, but of course, if you want you can impose the pro again solve the problem not be much of a difference. <coughs> now, when the upper plate is moved, made to move, then there will be a shear stress developed between these the interface, the upper plate and the fluid which is adjacent to it and this shear stress will make the fluid to move. So, this is basically a shear driven flow, the flow is due to the shear stress. In addition to this of course, you can have pressure gradient if you want or even pressure gradient due to body forces like if you make these plates inclined then obviously, there is a difference in the gravitational or body force. So, that will come as a modified pressure. So, all those may be different condition of the flow, the solution will be similar in all cases. This will say the x direction and this will take let us say the y direction and the z direction is along the width of the plate in which, in which the plate is infinite, so that there is no variation in the z direction. 
<laughs> so, what will be the governing equation this for this problem? We will consider steady flow that is the flow has been allowed to settle down. We are not considering the situation just when the plate has started moving. We are seeing that the plate is moving for some time, so that finally, nothing is no, no more change with time. When the flow starts of course, it will change with time, but then one time some time will reach when there will be no further change with time. The problem will reach to a steady state. We will consider that the problem has reached to a steady state, no more change in time. So, for the steady flow what are the governing equation in this case? The mass conservation or continuity equation is simply this is of course, remember we are considering only incompressible flow. no change in density. What will happen to the Navier-Stokes equation? We have seen that for this type of flow, where the flow is unidirectional and the flow in the direction of motion is independent of that direction. That is only u component of velocity is present and u is independent of x. The Navier-Stokes equation become d u d t plus u d u d x the d u d t is 0, u d u d x is also now 0 okay. equal to minus d p d x plus mu into d 2 u d x 2 plus d 2 u d y 2 plus d 2 u d z 2. For this case, the way we have taken d p d x is 0. we are considering no pressure gradient, by pressure we are meaning modified pressure. <coughs> if you want to consider some pressure gradient or if in some problem you need to consider the pressure gradient here, then of course, you can add that. So, without the pressure gradient what will happen to the Navier-Stokes equation? All the terms are 0 except mu d 2 u d y 2. So, this equation simply becomes mu d 2 u d y 2 is 0. If you want to solve for temperature, then that also can be solved as what k d t d x sorry d t d y d t d y square d 2 t d y square plus mu Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> this is the energy equation. In case you need to solve for the temperature field, this will be the form of the energy equation in this case. Okay. Now, the solution of this equation is basically trivial. The velocity field is basically trivial. What is the solution? Second derivative is 0, 
that means the velocity profile is linear, velocity variation is linear u equal to a y plus b. The constants are to be determined using the boundary condition in this case. What are the boundary conditions? Okay, we can apply the no slip boundary condition on the two walls. On the two walls, that there will be no relative velocity between the fluid and the solid at the interface. So, at y equal to minus h by 2, that is the lower wall, u is 0, and y equal to plus h by 2, if we consider the distance h, this distance, let us take. So, the boundary conditions are no slip boundary condition u at y equal to Okay, then what happens to you? What is u then? U equal to u equal to is it u zero by two? How will find the volume flux? Volume flux is flow velocity multiplied by the sum area. What will be that area here? Yeah, z axis is infinite. So, in case of infinite dimension in one size, all the quantity with respect to that dimension is taken as unit basis. Okay. So, in this case, volume flux per unit width, volume flux per unit width. Okay, you can complete this one. <coughs> How much it will come? I have not calculated. How much is the value coming?
Yes. Huh? Oh, you can't see it? Y by H plus n by 2 plus 1 by 2. Yeah, I mean, so that uh, this is not E 0 by 2. Oh, so if we uh, that means here it, it implies 2 H. No, you have found out this A and B and uh, th this expression. You mean to say this will be into y by h plus 1 by 2. Oh, this is achha, this half is inside. Oh, achha. oh, achha, might be that. Uh, oh, I took the width as 2 h. I took the width as 2 h, so it was uh, the, okay, it's fine. Let it be. Yeah, in my calculation, I took that 2 h. So, the um, these are y equal to minus h and y equal to plus h. So, how much is this q? q is coming u not u not h by 2. This expression also would have come simpler if you would have taken 2 h, it would have come only u not h. Anyway, the <coughs> the shear stress. How much is the shear stress which is causing this flow? Wall shear stress. You can find it in any of the plate. This you can see will come as mu e zero by. And the skin friction coefficient How much is the skin friction coefficient?
mu y rho u 0 h by 2. or a Reynolds number based on half width or half depth, a Reynolds number based on half depth. Yes. See this uh, <laughs> in the last problem in the Hagen puzzle flow problem that was defined as the average of the velocity. Okay. In this case, it is taken as the maximum velocity u 0, u 0 happens to be the maximum velocity, not taken as the average velocity. So, this velocity or what like in the definition of this Reynolds number, you will see that quite often we will choose different type of velocity, different type of length, okay. depending upon which is the most characteristics of the particular problem. For this problem, the velocity which is the characteristic of this problem is the velocity at which the plate is moved, because that defines the problem. So, that is the most important velocity here. So, that is what is taken here. Okay. And in that case, the average velocity was taken as the characteristic velocity, that because there was no particular velocity which was say more defining the problem. So, it was taken the average velocity. <laughs> in many other cases, you will see that the velocity changes from point to point. In that case, if you want to take some velocity for some purpose, which velocity we take? Like say a Reynolds number, which is taken as some density into rho into a velocity into some distance divided by the coefficient of viscosity. Now, what velocity and what distance, what length we take? Think about uh, aircraft flying, we want to say what is the Reynolds number of that aircraft. Okay. We usually do not go on saying that okay, Reynolds number at this point is this much, at this point is this much, we usually say one Reynolds number for the flight. Obviously, then we have to take one particular velocity, one particular length. For an aircraft, usually these are say the flight speed, of course, as you know that flight speed has only one value, but the flow velocity on the entire aircraft will have different value at different point. At each and every point the value will be different, but those values are not used to define the Reynolds number. Only the flight speed the that is what is taken as the characteristic velocity of this problem. And as far as the length is concerned usually it is taken as the mean aerodynamic chord. So, there are different situations in which this length and velocity and other things will be taken. So, in this problem this is half rho u 0 square in the Hagen puzzle flow problem it is half rho u bar square. <coughs> How much energy is lost that is the dissipation. How much energy is lost? Dissipation, as you have talked earlier, is the work done by the shear force against that straining motion, and it is one way energy transfer, part of the mechanical or useful energy is lost in that process, that is what is dissipation. For the last problem also we found out what is the dissipation. Here also we have the dissipation term mu d u d y square, the term which is present in the energy equation.
this of course very easy to find there is nothing. Once you get the value you can substitute it in that energy equation and solve for T. You can see that the solution of T will become quite simple. And <coughs> let's we will not uh, go for uh, finding the temperature that you can do there is nothing in it. Once you get this you can put it in that equation k d 2 d y square equal to this much and solve for t and again that t will contain two unknown coefficient which again you can find by satisfying the boundary condition boundary condition in this case may be quite different. One usual boundary condition is that you can say that the lower plate is fixed at this temperature, upper plate is fixed at this temperature. <coughs> and you will not do that. Let us say modify this problem a little bit. Think about we do not have the upper plate, we do not have the upper plate and the lower plate is now inclined and the fluid is coming down because of the body force which is a potential force. Can you solve the problem then? Assuming a steady state solution. Okay, let us tell me what will be the change in the equation. For this classical couch flow problem, we had the momentum equation or the Navier Stokes equation becomes simply mu d2 u d y2 equal to 0. Will there be a change in it? There will be a term for the pressure gradient. And can you say what will be that pressure gradient? Let us say the body force is the gravitational force. Rho g x Uh, that Laplacian is simply will come as d 2 u d y 2. Of course, we are taking x is along the inclined plane and y is normal to it. Because whatever is the direction of the flow that is what is x to us for this problem. See so the plate is inclined of course, the flow will be along that inclined plate and that will be the x. Because our basic assumption is that the flow in that direction and we will have no gradient in that direction. Okay. Let us hope you can solve this problem, you can find what will be the appropriate pressure gradient in the x direction. In this case the pressure gradient is just because of the gravitational force that is the modified pressure only no actual pressure gradient. <coughs> okay. We will move to a third problem this third problem of course, we will later on come back to it again, but this time we will consider because it has a very special importance to us subsequently. And would like to have this consideration here. Let us consider we have a flat plate 
and again for simplicity consider this is infinite in one direction. Again let us say it is infinite in the z direction and x is along the plate and the y is normal to it. Let us say the fluid this plate is immersed in a fluid. Then suddenly the plate is moved with a speed u 0. Then what will happen to the fluid? It is quite obvious that the fluid which is adjacent to the plate will experience a shear stress and will start moving with the plate. Now, as time progresses, the shear stress or the effect of the shear stress penetrates deep within the fluid, and after some time, a layer of fluid will move along with the plate. It is quite obvious that as time progresses, the thickness of the fluid which is moving with the plate will increase. If we consider that, I am <laughs> this is also another problem basic problem is again same that the fluid velocity is only in one particular direction in which the plate is moving okay. and in that direction there will be no gradient of the fluid. So, a suddenly moved plate suddenly moved plate as before we are considering unidirectional incompressible flow. So, unless we mention now we will always consider incompressible flow. Okay. <laughs> Let us say this is the plate moved suddenly at this is the x direction as well. <coughs> what will be the governing equation of this case? Continuity equation we need not write that is simply d u d x equal to 0. So, there is no point in writing it and the momentum equation is rho into d u d t. Once again we will consider no pressure gradient is imposed, no pressure gradient is imposed What are the boundary condition? What is the boundary condition? Hmm? For time greater than zero, okay. For time greater than zero, you
we say write in mathematical form. We are calling that is the time t equal to 0 when the plate is moved suddenly. At t equal to 0, the plate is given a sudden motion. <coughs> and also this is the initial condition, you need an initial condition also. <coughs> of course, why the lower half is of no interest to us. <coughs> We can modify this problem a little bit that is this u or we can divide this equation by u 0, okay. divide this equation by u 0 and make this boundary condition as 1 instead of 1 and u by u 0 we can treat as the variable. Hmm. Let us do that. call it u prime. Then the equation will become and the boundary condition will become The other, of course, same. <coughs> what is the solution of this equation? Have you solved this equation? I think perhaps you have solved this equation in your mathematics class. Hmm? Both equal to some constant, okay. you can but why should you assume both equal to constant? They are equal, but they need not be constant. Each of them need not be a constant. Why should they be constant? I mean, in general, in some particular case, it may be that is a different matter, but in general, you cannot assume them to be constant. I mean, what is the uh, logic behind it that you are assuming them constant? Huh? Okay, the solution take it. I think you have solved it in uh, mathematics class. This is also called ERFC. Uh, 
this ERF stands for error function and I think you know what is the error function say error function of any particular quantity let us say beta equal to what 2 by root pi into 0 to beta e to the power minus x square dx that is what is <coughs> error function. <coughs> so, this is the solution <coughs> and this ERFC is complementary error function. See, it is very easy to understand that solution will depend on y by root nu t. This way, see this equation, what are the parameter in this equation? u prime t nu and y. u prime is the dependent variable, okay. the others are either t and y are independent variable and the nu is the parameter in this equation. u prime is a non dimensional parameter. So, obviously, it will be function of a non dimensional function of the remaining parameter and if there are y nu and t the possible non dimensional variable is y by root nu t. The non dimensional combination coming from y nu and t is y by root nu t. <coughs> so, it is quite easy to understand that it will be a function the solution will be a function of y by root nu t or u prime will be a function of y by root nu t as it so happens it is function of y by 2 root nu t. <coughs> what will be the wall shear stress? This is very important wall shear stress tau w is mu du dy at y equal to 0. How much is that? This will be So, you see what happened if we look to the wall shear stress, this wall shear stress decreases as to the power minus up. The wall shear stress decreases as t to the power minus up. Can you say why the wall shear stress is decreasing with time? as time increasing more fluid is started moving. So, why that makes uh, okay. <coughs> in terms of uh, say okay, let us say this is think it this way this is a two dimensional flow what is the vorticity in this case? Vorticity is of course, in the z direction, but forget about the direction. What is the magnitude of the vorticity or how much is the vorticity? Hmm? 
dv dx minus du dy. It has only one component of curl of u for a two dimensional flow is what? Is simply dv dx minus du dy k, the direction k. In a two dimensional case, the curl has only one component which is normal to the plane of plane. So, if our two dimensional motion is in x y plane, then the vorticity is in the z direction okay. and its value is d v d x minus d u d y. Now, in this problem there is no v. So, d u d y itself is the vorticity. Okay. So, what you are calling velocity gradient or shear stress that is also can be called as the vorticity. Now, we know that <coughs> vorticity, what happens that vorticity first of all it can convect with the flow, it is diffused by viscous action and it might have some redistribution due to stretching and deformation effect. Looking to that, forget about that uh, stretching or deform in two dimensional case that stretching or deformation is 0. In two dimensional case that stretching or deformation term cannot be present, so that is 0. So, what remains is that vorticity can either be convected and can be diffused by viscous action. So, initially when the motion started this vorticity was confined very close to the wall, very close to the wall. Now, as more and more amount of fluid is started moving, the viscous action is actually that is why the motion is starting that the viscous action is diffusing the vorticity to other part. So, that is a natural diffusion phenomena. If there is high concentration of any quantity, then the diffusion try to make it even over certain region. So, if there is a vorticity highly concentrated vorticity near some region, then the diffusion will try to spread it out over certain area. So, that there is no high concentration in any one region, but a smooth or milder concentration over a larger region that is what always a process of diffusion. And because of that process, this vorticity is being diffused to other part and consequently the fluid which is started moving along with it is also coming under that vorticity or rotation, rotational motion. So, this is one example where we are seeing that vorticity which has been created near the plate is being diffused over time to other part of the fluid due to viscous action. The convection is of course, always there because in this case con both are continuous process convection and diffusion. We are not stopping it, we are not changing its velocity or anything. So, the convection and diffusion both are continuous process <coughs> and so wall shear stress decreases because the vorticity is being diffused to other part by viscous action. <coughs> And if we find out that how what is the thickness of the layer of the fluid that is moving with the plate and that part where the, the region over which the fluid is moving is called in this case a shear layer, shear layer because there is shear present on it and the shear force has started this motion. So, it is a shear layer. And the thickness of the shear layer is defined the thickness at which the flow velocity falls to say 1 percent of the u 0. Can you find the thickness of that region where find the y where u is say 1 percent of u 0.
So, find y where or say u by u 0 equal to 0 0.01. This will, this is called the shear layer. And this is, this is general. Anywhere there is some interface, this interface may be even too fluid. So, like you know, when air moves over water, it is common case all the time happening air moves over water that is also an interface, interface between air and water and again that interface will behave something like this, this flat plate and again a shear layer will form, shear layer both in the air part as well as in the water part and you know because of the motion of air or wind over sea, the sea, sea surface particularly up to certain depth acquires some special type of velocity and that velocity profile is like a spiral which is called Ekman spiral. So, <laughs> anyway what I was telling that whenever there is an interface and then there is a motion in the interface a shear layer will develop, a shear layer will develop. So, the shear layer can be bounded to a solid boundary, it is not, not essential to be bounded to a solid boundary, it will form when there is no solid boundary just as in case of air water interface. It can even form in air air interface, I will tell you an example where there is an air air interface. Think about the jet that is the burnt gas coming out from an engine nozzle, maybe a rocket nozzle, maybe a jet engine nozzle, okay. that is air, a very small amount of hydrocarbon which does not change it to change it from air, that is still air. It comes out and mixes with the atmosphere, the atmospheric air is more or less at rest, this air coming from the jet is at very high speed. So, that interface is again an inter this air and this air which is coming out as a jet at a high speed is different from the air which is at rest and the surface between that divides these two, two air is again an interface. So, again in, in that interface there will shear layer develop. Okay. So, whenever there is some interface a shear layer will always develop and the shear layer means the flow is rotational there is a body city in it and the thickness over which this body city spreads of course, it spreads to be precise theoretically to infinite, but it is taken that by which this distance something like this depending upon if it is in this case we are calling it 1 percent because the we are moving the plate. So, gradually the velocity is decreasing, so where it will become 1 percent that is what is thickness. If we take it the other way that the plate is fixed and the fluid is moving suddenly. Okay. Then of course, at the interface the plate is stationary at that point there will be no velocity and then gradually it will increase. In that case we will call it where the velocity has reached 99 percent, where the velocity has reached 99 percent. So, depending upon the situation either 1 percent or 99 percent that part is usually defined as the shear layer thickness. So, this is the shear layer thickness, this this value of y is called shear layer thickness. And I want you to find out this in for this particular problem. I will give you the value will be the shear layer thickness, the value will be 
approximately we will call this as delta the shear layer thickness is near about 3.64 root of nu t. So, it is increasing with t to the power half. This result we would like to use sometime later. So, I will expect you to remember at least this much that the CL layer thickness increases as a square root of time. That result will be important for us for sometime later. <laughs> Anyway, try to find the shear layer thickness and okay, if you do not get it, we will do it. <coughs> 